G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we get closer and closer to the preseason. Today, I'm going to be doing a video about which injury for each AFL club would ruin their season to the greatest extent. Now, this is provocative title and I want all of us to collectively touch wood right now. There's no wood down here. Ah, the entertainment unit is wooden. Obviously, I wish every single player in the AFL a clean run of injury this particular year, but I suppose this video could be rephrased as uh, which player could each team least afford to lose for an extended period during the 2024 season. So I'm going to go through each of the 18 teams and pick one player. I like to mix up the order a little bit now. I usually do it alphabetically. I'm going to do reverse order of last year's ladder. So like I said, I'm isolating which player would most affect their team's season if they were to miss through injury. Before I get into it, if you could do all the good stuff, if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you could like the video, that would be much appreciated. All right, so reverse order of last year's ladder means that we're starting with my boys first up in the West Coast Eagles. And this might be the toughest answer because we're talking about a team that has been decimated with injury and every valuable player that you could imagine has missed extensive periods of the season through injury. So one that comes to mind is probably Oscar Allen. Uh, that being said, I, I, I had a chat to Druzy about this and I think a different take on this is potentially Harley Reid. Now, when we talk about ruining a club season, West Coast don't really have high hopes this year. So what are they hoping to get out of it? Well, they want to see some excitement and, and improvement development from the youngsters. Now you could, again, throw a blanket over a few, but maybe Harley Reid as the prize recruit out of 2023. Uh, might be the one that would probably be the most disappointing to lose. Like I said, we're not going to be pushing for finals anyway, so that would kind of ruin the season from that point of view. Now let's talk about North Melbourne, another rebuilding side, uh, that I think the answer for this is a little bit more clear. Now again, the same premise applies. They're probably looking more for excitement out of their youngsters, and George Wardlaw comes to mind. That being said, I will throw LDU as the answer to this, and I'll justify why, because I think when we saw North Melbourne playing good periods of football, particularly in the early part of last year. We saw LDU putting on, you know, basically Brownlow level pace at the start of the season. His opening month or so was outstanding. And I suppose my logic for this is North Melbourne obviously want to get development out of their youth, but they also want to see improvement and a better competitive game style. I think if I had to pick one player that would elevate them to genuinely improving next year, it would be LDU. Sure, like you would, you want to see Wardlaw fit, and fingers crossed he is fit, but I think they could have a much more productive season if they're genuinely improving up the ladder, and I think LDU is the avenue for doing that. Again, we know in football one player isn't central to a team's hopes, but I think LDU is still my answer for North Melbourne regardless. Let's talk about Hawthorne, another team looking to bounce up the ladder. A lot of new recruits, a lot of uh, exciting young talent scattered around the list. Uh, one player I think that would be kind of central to them improving is probably Mitch Lewis, and part of this is structural as well. Like, obviously, he's a really talented uh, key forward in his own right, so they want to see him get fit, and uh, obviously, he hasn't had the best run with injury over the years. So I think, you know, in terms of excitement, if he were to miss football, that would be probably the most deflating, but also to their hopes of genuinely improving. I think having a high production key forward is going to be central to Hawthorne potentially bouncing up to the, you know, maybe being competitive for finals at a, at a stretch, but potentially just in the group below that. Let's talk about the Gold Coast Suns, and there's a few options for this team. Obviously, we saw them lose Took Miller for a period of time last year, and it would have hurt for sure. Uh, that being said, I think one player that they can ill afford to lose, similar to the reasons I said for Hawthorne, is going to be Ben King, because I think in in terms of replaceability, Took Miller probably has Anderson, Raul, and to some extent now Flanders. You might see some Bailey Humphrey action in there. That was a weird way to phrase it. But Ben King as their main key forward guy who can potentially be kicking 60 goals a season, I think he is quite central, more so than any other player to them really improving and pushing for finals. And further to that, probably the least replaceable player on their list. Next, we got the Richmond Football Club. Uh, again, this one's tricky. Uh, there was a few options here. Tim Taranto came to mind, but I actually do think that Dion Prestia might be the answer for this particular one. I do think he's a bit of a barometer player for the Tigers from the outside looking in. And I feel like when he's playing his best footy, that's when we see the best version of that Richmond mid midfield functioning. I know Taranto was a pretty runaway best and fairest winner, and maybe the answer is Tim Taranto as well, but I think Dion Prestia is worth a mention. I think that midfield depth that Richmond have isn't necessarily super deep. You know, they obviously recruited Taranto and Hopper because they kind of saw a midfield chasm coming, to be honest, and I think that's probably true. It's top heavy with Taranto, Hopper, Dion Prestia, obviously, and you, you got some decent types in there as well, but I think Dion Prestia might be the one that I think would be the most devastating short term if he was to miss football. Let's talk about Geelong. Uh, there's two that come to mind. Uh, the two that came to mind for me were Tom Stewart and Jeremy Cameron, but I think the, the raw star talent 
of Jeremy Cameron is probably the difference between them playing finals and not because Tom Stewart was damn good this year and they kind of struggled. And, you know, Jeremy Cameron was good too, but he did miss some football and I think that probably hurt them. I think he's, a, you know, he's probably more of a match winner. I'm not even saying he's necessarily better than Tom Stewart. Like comparing apples and oranges there, Tom Stewart is one of the best defenders of his generation, to be honest. It's getting to that point. Um, and But Jeremy Cameron, I think, is more of a match winner. And therefore, I think his presence and him getting into form and playing well is probably more central to DeLong's hopes of pushing up the ladder. Now we got Fremantle. Uh, this one's tricky. You know, I, th- I think there's midfield depth there. I think the key backs are pretty sweet. Um, Sean Darcy came to mind. I actually think it might be Jai Amos. And the reason for that is, yes, he is only going to be in his third year. Still pretty new to AFL in general. That being said, you know, 41 goals. Like, I must admit, I haven't looked this up properly, but when was the last time a Fremantle player kicked more than 40 goals in a season? It can't happen too much. I reckon, you know, Rory Lobb, I think, kicked 36 the year before. Past that, I'm not really sure. Walters, maybe? I shouldn't run my mouth without checking stats. However, my point here being that uh, he is a clearly important avenue to go for Fremantle, and structurally, as that tall forward, probably means that he's the least replaceable out of any of that group. You know, Fremantle roll in with a forward line of Josh Tracy and Matt Tabner again next year. I I think that is severely diminished, whereas they could probably cope without, say, a Sean Darcy if you got Luke Jackson in there better. Um, you know, if Caleb wrong, touch wood, misses football, they've still got a pretty deep midfield. So I think Jai Amos is the answer there. Next, we got Essendon. And this is probably a boring answer, but I think Zach Merritt is the clear answer to this one. He's by far and away their best player. Their midfield is probably comprised of a few guys that, you know, either have been good in the past or we are expecting to come good in the future. And Zach Merritt's just constantly been this elite standard for a long time now. I think they've diversified their forward line now. You know, maybe Peter Wright was more of an obvious answer previously, but I think with Langford's season last year, they've proven, you know, there's, there's a bit of diversity in that in that mix and there's a few different ways they can hurt you now. You take out Zach Merritt of this team and I think it diminishes significantly. So I think he's the clear answer. For Adelaide, again, a pretty well-rounded team. I think there's a genuine A-grade midfielder in Jordan Dawson and that's probably also the part of the ground they can afford to take out the least. I suppose you could argue, you know, their key back situation if, say, uh, you know, we know Nick Murray's going to be missing football. Um, You know, if they lost Jordan Butts as well, could that be devastating? You could absolutely make the case for that. Small forwards, you lose Rankin. I think they've still got some other good ones. I know Murphy and uh, Rochelle don't necessarily kick as many goals, but I do think they can kind of cope without that. Honestly, like it's a pretty well-rounded team. So picking one player is hard, but I'd say Jordan Dawson is an A grader, possibly their best player. And also I think that midfield is severely diminished if you take out Jordan Dawson from that team. So that's my logic there. For the Western Bulldogs, again, similar answer. I think it's got to be Bontempelli. You know, if you take out, say, a Norton or Jamara, you still have the other one. And down back, you know, there's Keith and there's Liam Jones. And there's O'Donnell, buzzling it behind that. I just think Bontempelli is just so good. I don't, I don't even know how much harder I need to make this point. He is the best player in the game. I think you take him out on top of Bailey Smith already being out, then the Bulldogs, that would hurt the Bulldogs the most. I think that's simple. Now for the Sydney Swans, this one was a little bit trickier. Um, you know, Errol Golden's probably their best player at the moment. Uh, but I, I thought I'd throw a different one in there and maybe go Tom McCartan. Uh, because I don't think they're, you know, the tall back situation, like I've talked about this preseason, it's not really confidence inspiring, to be honest. You know, the, there's Hamling, there's Melican, there's Tom McCartan. Tom McCartan is a good player. So I think structurally, if you lost Tom McCartan out of that team, they wouldn't cope as well. Whereas maybe with their midfield, you take out Goulden potentially, they could cope comparatively a bit better. That was a tricky one. Sydney fans, let me know what you think of that one. It's a tough one to answer. For GWS, we've got a very good top end, very good top end. Um, You know, their back line is unreal. Midfield bats deep. A lot of veterans that are getting to that stage of veteran, but that are just still playing really, really well. I think, again, that the answer is going to be their best player in Toby Green because he's their best forward. I don't think it's a particularly strong forward line. You take out 66 goals out of that team, and I think they suffer quite a lot. Whereas you take out any given midfielder, um, I think they're probably bat deep enough to cope with it. You take out, you know, Sam Taylor. They've still got Jack Buckley and, you know, other smaller types like Iden. And I think they're just a little bit more balanced in that part of the ground. So I think take out Toby Green, that's the obvious answer. And we've got St Kilda. This one is another interesting one. Probably a team that, to my mind, doesn't have a clear standout player. There's quality players across the park. Max King does come to mind and maybe is a very good shout for the answer. However... I might say Jack Sinclair. I think his running carry out of the back half, uh, off that half back flank there, is quite central to the way they play their game. He's been all Australian quality for two years in a row now, and I think that would actually be the most devastating 
loss that St Kilda could incur. Again, touch wood, I hate talking about it in these terms, but I think you could easily also make the case that they would struggle without Max King for an extended period of time. That being said, they still were a good team when Max King was out in the early parts of the season from memory. So I think I'll back in Jack Sinclair is my answer here. Next, we got Carlton. This one is tough. This one is tough. We've got some star talent all across the field in the spine, uh, generally speaking. You know, the first player that came to mind was Charlie Curnow. Sam Walsh also came to mind. Really important player in that finals push right when Carlton got good. But, you know, I might mix it up here. I, I think Jacob Wiedering is a good shout here. Now, uh, disclaimer, Jacob Wiedering has recently done a calf. Um, fingers crossed, I think think he might still be okay, at least in the first month of the season. I don't really know where that sits. But when you factor in the key positional depth, I don't think it's quite there at Carlton. By contrast, you know, it would be, I, I don't know, Carlton fans let me know, but it would be Lewis Young, Marchbank, and McGovern as the third tall. I think that's quite a hit if you take Wittering out of that team. Contrast that with the forward line. I know so you could take out Kerno, and you know that's 80 goals a season. But could that then? You've still got Harry Mackay, who has proven he can win a Coleman, who could come back into form. So I would argue that the back line probably can't afford that loss as much as the forward line can. But it's a tough one. Next, we got the Melbourne Football Club. Whew, tough, tough. Petrarca, I would say, is their best player. Maybe Max Gorn is the answer, though, because I do think he's one of the most, well, probably the most impactful ruckman in the competition. But you take out Petrarca, but they still got Oliver and then Viney, potentially. Uh, so let's say Max Gorn might be the hardest one, but I don't think there's a really clear answer for that particular group. There's May and Lever down back. I think you could even throw Bailey Fritsch into this mix, just such a proven, prodigious goal kicker. But I'll say Max King probably makes the most impact in terms of one player. For Port Adelaide, I think there's two clear choices here. Zach Butters and Connor Rosie are their two best players. Maybe I'd make the case that Zach Butters probably is a little bit more central to their engine room. But again, I don't really feel strongly about that. I think the gap between those two players isn't too severe. I think they've got a few key back options now. I think they've got a few key forward options. And naturally, my mind goes to the spine when we talk about replaceability. So I think they're fairly sweet in that regard. So I just think the obvious answer is probably, I'd probably say Zach Butters marginally over Rosie, but it's it's one of those two. For the Brisbane Lions, again, tricky one, tricky one. You know, I've written down Harris Andrews here because I think he is such a prodigious gun and probably a lot better than their next best, who is Jack Payne. And, you know, there's Darcy Gardner in there. But I'm also, as I say that, like Charlie Cameron comes to mind when you consider how important he is, A, to their defensive pressure, but he also kicks a shitload of goals. Like, what he kick, like 55 plus, like four years in a row? Something like that. It's close to that stat. So maybe Charlie Cameron is actually the answer here. I think you take Cameron out of that team, then their, their forward line not only becomes a little bit less potent, but the defensive pressure and the way they apply it, it also takes a bit of a hit. So... In a, in a team that's got a lot of even contribution and a, and a lot of good players, like or very, very good players, I think if I had to pick one, maybe Charlie Cameron disrupts that team most. And Collingwood, again, tricky one. Uh, they've already lost a pretty central player in terms of their structure in Dan McStay. So further to that, who would be the next best? I mean, the Nick Dacos comes to mind, uh, arguably their best player. I would, I'd probably, you know, throw something a little bit different in here and say Darcy Moore. All-Australian key back, I think he's clearly... Clearly their best key position player. I think if you you know took one more out of that team, I think it would decimate it harder than, say, Nick Dacos missing a period of time. I think the way they play their football could probably cope slightly better. But that's line ball. That's line ball because Nick Dacos is arguably the best playmaker in the game. So really tough call that one as well. But let me know, guys, what you think. Uh, let me know if your team which ones you agree with and which ones you disagree with. I'm, uh, I'm intrigued. Everyone's got a little bit more of a nuanced opinion on their own team. So please let me know. This one was a little bit of fun. And again, collectively, let's all touch wood for all these players. And um, hopefully we don't see injuries. That's the last thing we want to see. But anyway, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.